Okay, my friends, I'm going to talk about control, but before I do, I just want to talk to you about, I, as you know, I do a lot of research in space and light and um, the solar system, the galaxy, the whole shooting match about how we're overheating on the earth and everything, and I'm, I'd love to try to do what we can to save the earth. Now, I've been attacked by people that have been put under the control of academia. They're being used as pawns to attack me. And I'm going to tell you who they are in a second. And then after that, we're going to go back to looking at some of the... I, the reason I went into the moon research is because of moonlight. Now, moonlight... Hold on, I've got a little doodle that I draw to show the difference between sunlight and moonlight. Sunlight is radiated directly from the sun. The moon re-radiates the sunlight, so it has to absorb it and then spit it back out again. So we have really red, red rays from the sun. We don't have the real bright ray. Obviously, you go out at night, it's red. But guess what? Somebody sent to me the other day, and of course, you know that the sun coming from here is the hot, hot stuff. Obviously, you get out in the hot sun, it's hot. Here, you, Moonlight is a cool light, they say, and I never really thought much about it when they say it's a cool light. You know, it's not hot. However, somebody sent me something that says that when moonlight hits something, it makes it colder. And I said, well, how would you know that? And they said, well, you take two things and you put them out, one, put one in the shade of the moon so the moon doesn't hit it at all, the light from the moon doesn't hit it at all, and the other one, it hits it, and the, the, this will be colder than the one that the moonlight doesn't hit. And I said, no, that can't be. Any, well, th that was my first reaction. I'm not saying that now. That's my first reaction. So, I, obviously, I, I never say no and then just walk away from it. So, I said, well, how could that possibly be? If somebody's making that statement, why would they make it? Now, it appears that the moon radiates a frequency that sort of mimics the frequency that's admitted in the very, very, very low frequency, just sort of drifting out heat. And I believe it pushes it back in. So on a surface, you're going you're gonna to see a, a cooler effect than light, than heat radiating out. It's more or less being almost pushed back in because this is a very long frequency. I don't know if you can see that little swirly thing there. These are short frequencies and they really push and they heat up. This is sort of just a really slow. It's like taking this. And light is all different frequencies. It can be this, it can be this, it can be that, it can be this. They're only this out here in here. Over here they're way long frequencies. So I believe the way long frequencies are just enough to bump into the way long frequencies that are just emissions of Heat, the same is like this. This is almost the same emission as what's coming out in the darkness of night. We're radiating heat away from the earth. All right, this is radiating heat. Basically, the uh, moonlight is a very, very long frequency wave, and I believe it basically bumps it and pushes it back in. So instead of radiating out, it's actually taking heat in. So what, what does that mean? It does. It means that the two different things, that the one has got is in the shade and it's it's warmer and in this moonlight it's cooler well guess what in my mind if you went down deep into in, inside of the thing that heat is going down so this one here is going to be hotter down inside than this one here which is radiating its heat out so down inside it will be less hot so what you need to do is take two thermal thermal um, temperature you know, like a little thermometer so that, that reads the deep down temperature, and then you take these, because they're using these little, you know, things they shoot on your forehead to take it, and all that's doing is taking from the surface. I want to see what's deep down inside. If it gets colder down inside, that's a whole different issue. Now, I haven't done those tests. Let somebody do it. Take two thermal, regular um, thermometers that you put in your mouth to test the, the actual 
heat that touches it, because that, and then take two glasses of water, make sure they're identical, same temperatures when you start, and none of them in the sunlight or um, moonlight or any of that stuff, and make sure that they're identical temperatures, and then do what I said, put one in the moonlight and one in the shade, but right next to each other. Shade this one and let this one go in the moonlight. Now, then take your thermometer and, you, you know, your surface thermometer and see you'll see it it, it may go cooler and, and I think it does that everybody seems to feel that that's true they have no no explanation for it but I believe my explanation is the one that works is that this light is just enough to push it back <laughs> instead of radiating out because all we're picking up is the radiation out that other thermometer is picking up the other th thermometer down inside is picking up the true temperature of that and I would I, I almost think that this one would increase in temperature the surface would be colder the internal temperature would be warmer than this one this one the surface would be hotter internal temperature cooler that's my take right at this moment but we're going to go and look at this but before I do this this is going to be kind of a long duration thing because there's a whole ton of different radi radiation factors from the moon it's it's a many splendored thing. This is there's all of these frequencies. We're way down in here in the moon frequencies. We're we're not hardly up. We're just barely into the visible range. Now from the sun, you're getting all that stuff. So there's a whole different idea. Infrared, and then you've got all your different sound and radio and all that stuff comes sub millimeter wavelengths, mid infrared, near infrared, and and all of them have a different a different frequency and and we're going to be looking at this too. I, I, I got a lot to talk about here. X-ray radiation, gamma rays, so this is going to go on. But before I do that, I just want to make a statement about people that have been attacking me for doing this kind of research. Try, and I'm trying to save the earth and I'm really getting annoyed as hell. I got to be perfectly honest with you, flat earthers. Good morning, my wonderful, wonderful friends. It's Roger from Mud Fossil University, as you can see. And this is, um, I'm in a little bit of distress this morning, and I want to tell you why. It's because I cover all the topics of science, and I am very well educated on it. I'm mostly self-educated, and I mostly push back against the things that are presented in mainstream. So consequently I am literally crushed by mainstream and they are doing everything they can within their power to make sure that I am unheard. And one thing that they are using is people that love God. Because some people love God so much that they've lost their mind, literally lost their mind. I'm going to explain it to you. I show dark matter. We have literally found dark matter and I can create free energy. I'm almost a hundred percent certain of it. I can't get a single person to listen to me because of the insane people that have destroyed my credibility. Now I show ancient heads. That's not, so, this is not, nothing here that I'm showing that is fake. Everything I have I can stand behind and prove if it was allowed to be seen. I'm talking about can the earth be saved? Why are we overheating? Attacked. I'm showing giant fingers and, the, and I have the DNA proven, the fingerprints and everything. And I show how the earth is getting hotter and boiling and burning up. And guess who I get attacked by? The people that love God. The flat earthers. They have turned... I, when I first discovered the mud fossils, and, and they are giants, and then the flat earthers jumped on board because the reason they jumped on board, I never heard one word in my life about flat earth until I discovered giants. When I discovered the giants, Yale and Harvard and every single one of them said, what are you, a creationist? And then they said, you must believe the earth is flat too, right? I'm serious. This was basically the discussion I had with the academia. It had nothing to do with this because it had to do with God. 
So they turned to the flat earth people and they said, oh, you must believe the earth is flat if you believe this guy. And they all said, oh, yeah, yeah, we believe the earth is flat. Yes, absolutely, we believe that because if you said we have to believe that, we'll believe it. They used these people as pawns. And, and you know, I, 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 I'm fed up with it. I'm done with it. It's been 10 years. Please go somewhere else. I don't need the subscribers. I couldn't care less if you subscribe or not. You have come to try to destroy my research. When I put this up, why is Earth overheating? I'm trying to save the Earth. Within less than a minute or two, I had about a t 10 or 15 down hits. Look at this. At Aspen Dental, today... 38 down hits on how to save the Earth. And now I got so pissed off finally I just said look I'm trying to help God's beautiful earth and the flat earth people attack me for 10 years they have been flooding against me and are used by the academics they see they they say see all those flat earth people those fools around mud fossils Roger's a stupid God lover that's what they say he's a God lover he's so stupid he must think the earth is flat who could possibly believe all this nonsense he's saying and they won't look and the flat earthers they come up here they give me a, a down down arrow without even looking because they saw that I showed that the earth was a, I showed the galaxy show anything of that's real these people have so upset me I can't even imagine Every day I wake up and I, uh, they're pawns. They think God will love them for their insanity. He will not love you. He will destroy you for trying to destroy me and the earth. I'm done with it. This person says, ignore them. Well, I can't, how can I just ignore them? They've destroyed me. They've put me in a box that makes me look like an idiot. Right? The academics use them. When I discovered mud fossils, 100% of the university said, what are you, some kind of creationist? You must think the earth is flat, too. And that, I, before that, I, nobody's ever talked about the flat earth. You didn't hear this 10 years ago. There was no flat earth nonsense. As soon as I found the giants, they trolled me. Academia sent trolls out after me, linked me to those flat earth fools. And then they said, you will, you must love God, so you must be a, you, you know, anyway. Yes, and the flat earth fools came out and said, yes, oh, we love God, so we will destroy Roger's work if he won't agree with flat earth. And that's what they did. They absolutely destroyed, tried to do everything they did. I had to shut down channels. I had to shut down my dot-com site. I had to shut down groups on Facebook. I stopped taking Facebook friends years ago because there's nothing but the flat earth fools are trying to attack me. And I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus said to his disciples, "His inevitable stumbling blocks will come, but woe to you flat earth fools through whom they come. It would be better for you to have a millstone hung around your neck and be thrown into the sea than to cause me, one of the little ones, to stumble. Watch yourselves. This is over. I'm, I block every one of them. So as soon as I see one flat word, you're gone. I'm done with it. Case she is closed.